Now, Eddie, as I'm sure you'll remember, because every interview we have is tattooed onto your soul. Deeply memorable. Yeah. I think I was the first person to give you your first wand ever. Yeah. Because you were at Comic-Con, gave away 3,000. 3,000, but didn't have my own one. I've got an idea. I'll get some help. Um, sure. Should we just come down? I was given one, and I had to make 3,000 people do a spell. He is now going through the crowd, and every single person here is going to get their own wand. When I handed them all out, I handed them all out. And so I got on stage to do this spell and realized I didn't have a wand. So I ran back into the audience, and there was a girl there. And I, I said, look, please, can I, can I just borrow this wand? And she was like, yeah, if you give it back. Eddie is back. Let's hear it for Eddie Redmayne. So I went and I did the spell. And then I could see her in the front row being like, what? So I surrendered. And uh, so I've actually not, I don't have my own wand. So well, this is a big moment. Allow me to give that to Thank you. Thank you. I was just wanting to check in on how your spinny wand skills my are. My spinny wand skills. Any better? Um, no. Well, oh, no, you haven't. So this is Did, your wand. You, it's not my wand. No, that's right. That was a test. That, this is, <laughs> Here's this your is wand. My, that is also not that's my wand. Not your wand. Didn't you also get me really sort of competitive with Dan Radcliffe about who had a better wand? <laughs> Sounds like I, me. I feel like that was just the thing I uh, do. Yeah, so spinny wand. <laughs> Three movies in. And the alarm goes off because the, it was yeah. that good. Every actor that comes onto one of these movies is like, yeah, with my wand, I'm, that was pretty good. That was pretty amazingly bad. I'm going to do something deft and different. And, you know, perhaps I'll use it like a paintbrush or perhaps I'll use it like a sort of a dagger. And in the end, we all end up just... <laughs> Using it like you did when you were a kid. Pew, pew, pew. No, best not. I had um, a slightly depressing thing the other day, then, when I, I have a, a five-year-old daughter, I have a present for you. Here is, here is a wand, thinking, like, I, for a moment, might be a dad of some kudos. And, and she was like, thanks, Dad. Um, does it have a star? Could I put a star on the top? We ended up having to take this wand, attach a cardboard star that I cut out, and cover the whole thing in tinfoil. And then it was fairy wand transpired. She didn't. <laughs> I thought for and a second you were going to say your daughter said, thanks, Daddy, do you know Daniel Radcliffe? <laughs> she probably would have said that as well. Can I have Harry Potter's one, though? <laughs> That's all great. This new guy. <laughs> this, this new lad. Mm, not so sure. That was... You're working for longer than five minutes this time right. with Jude Law in this movie. Yeah. I kind of love in this movie, he goes from being a sort of wily master apprentice mm. relationship with Newt to being kind of a bit more fraternal. Yeah. I'm not going to say mates because he's still giving Three points to Hufflepuff. Yeah, correct. Three points to Hufflepuff. There's still a distance, there's, but there there's, is, there's, there's a chumminess. Mates. And Newt gives some advice to Dumbledore in this movie. He gives him like some warm, sort of fraternal advice. And I feel like not many people get to give Dumbledore advice, so I, I took that scene very seriously. I can see the two characters talking about fashion a lot. Fashion. Knitwear. So, <laughs> knitwear. <laughs> so much knitwear chart. Exactly. Um, so about the, the chicness of the knitwear. It's all You're getting hot in your scarf. I'm going to take this off because there's a level of sucking up that even I won't yeah, do. Yeah, I know. That's, it's almost verging on... Secondary. Yes, it's obsequious and awful. Have you watched the Harry Potter reunion show? Think of that powerful memory. Make it the happiest you can remember. No, I haven't, because I don't have HBO Max, which I shouldn't have made given that. <laughs> Warner Brothers made this movie. I am going to go out on a limb here and say, yeah. we can make that happen. Oh, can you? Um, hang on, let me just try. <laughs> it's Thank done. you, that's great, it's great. It's, it's amazing what I can do. But I've got that thing, do you have that thing of like, which of the things, like, we need to get all those things, and I'm just a bit behind on getting all the streamers catching up. The trick them. is, have everything. Okay, perfect, this is good. Chop done. What do fans say to you when they do see you on the street now? Because this is three movies in, it's the Wizarding World, it's a big deal. Yeah. Do you get a lot of... Oh, my actual lord. Do you know, I get a lot of crocheting. I don't know if it's a, like, Tom Daly thing after his, you know, he's been crocheting during the Olympics and stuff, but I've been given a crocheted niffler, a crocheted picket yesterday that was wonderfully sort of detailed, and a crocheted uh, newt. So crocheting is the trend of, of The Secrets of Dumbledore this year. What um, an incredible answer. Uh, yeah. They're bringing crochet to the fan interaction. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know how that's happened, but it's but clearly, it really has become a kind of a, a thing. We've talked before about how Niffler is getting out of control. We talked about the, you know, the trailers being too big. I always yeah. hear about on the Fast and the Furious um, films that they have like, that all they're all such mega stars now, those actors that their trailers are like <laughs> five stories <laughs> worth <laughs> of trailers. Those Nifflers. Nothing on yeah. the Nifflers. Nothing yeah. on the Nifflers. Now, the posters are almost like coquettishly. I mean, there clearly is a Niffler Pickett spin off coming. No joke, I've watched that cartoon. Yeah. 
without my god kids, I would just watch it and Me go... Me too. I just hope that Nuke can occasionally, like, jump in for a cameo. Yeah. You don't even need to see his face. You can just see his, like, arm picking up, pick it. But they do save the day in this. Yeah, he deserves the poster, let's be honest. He does. The green screenery I've seen in some behind-the-scenes stuff, it's actually grey screenery. Yeah. What is the most movie magic moment you've had, if that's a question? Well, the most movie magic moment for me on this one was the opening of the film set in, in sort of Guilin in China, in these mountains, and there are these gigantic waterfalls, and they built that on the back lot. Um, in Watford? In Watford. And these huge pumps to make these waterfalls, and I was so excited about it as a secret. Then a newspaper sent a drone over who took a photo of it, and it got released before we had even started shooting there. I was so upset, but then the article said that it was the Batcave because they were shooting Batman at the same time. And I was like, great, our secret is safe in the... But that scene is a scene in which I end up in this lake mm -hmm. uh, underneath the waterfalls. And we were meant to shoot it at night shoot in the height of summer. As you do. COVID happened. Ah. And so we ended up doing it on about the sort of, I think about the 15th of December that year. And that was, so it went from a moment of great movie magic to one of complete agony. horror and agony, yeah. <clears throat> You're thinking, oh, my life's very glamorous. I'm a, I'm a Hollywood star. And now I'm freezing. In Watford, living the dream. Yep. And now I'm freezing. There are, there off. Are, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. just wonderful. I mean, with the creatures, it's always there. It's often nothing there and <laughs> looking cross eyed at nothing. Uh, but sometimes it works. And they're great puppeteers and people doing their things. I've got to ask you, because I haven't had the chance before, but where is your Oscar right now? I have a piano at home, which I bought after Les Mis. That was what the, the, the sort of gift I bought myself. With. And it sits on, on the piano there, looking very unreal. Yeah. It never feels, something about it, it feels very sort of um, unreal. Piano is a good yeah. answer. I had one the other day where somebody said they keep their Emmy in their biscuit cupboard because oh, they're- biscuit cupboard. They're a bit like, should I have a biscuit? Yeah. Oh, the Emmy oh. says I maybe shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Oscars, do you know my sadness though is that when the Oscars happened that, um, that year, I got sent by Jimmy Kimmel these underpants that were directly molded for the Oscar and they uh, and they were sort of velcroed <laughs> on front of them. They were my pride and joy for a while, but when I moved house, they got lost somewhere. So oh, I've, I've lost the, the Oscars underpants. Don't yeah. you hate it when you lose, lose your Oscars underpants? It's just a nightmare. We've talked about the coats and the boots and all that stuff. Yeah. What has actually made it home? I thieved this time. Because three in you can thieve. Three, I mean, I don't know if you can, but I just did. I just started stealing stuff and, and I stole a case which I felt was okay because in this film, Bunty has a few cases made nice. because it turns into a kind of heist movie. What is this place? The room we require. And I thought they wouldn't miss one. And it has all the drawings inside of the creatures and it has a photo of Tina and oh. maps of the world. And it sits in my office, yeah. I've got an idea for you, take the Oscar. Pop it in there. Pop the, it in there. And so if anybody pops around your house and does that thing where you go, oh, Eddie, I'm just popping to the loo. Yeah. They sneak into your office. Yeah. They have a snoop. They have a snoop. They open uh, it up. Uh, <laughs> Oscar. Oscar. There it is. Lacking the pants. <laughs> a pant-lacking Oscar. That's a great way of ending an interview on those words. Thank you. I'm going to try and do one last one. And scene. Cut. Cut before that bit. Cut before that bit. Dan Radcliffe wouldn't have done that. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to keep up to date. You can listen to my Radio 1 movies and TV podcast screen time on BBC Sounds. And you can find these interviews in full on BBC iPlayer by searching Movies with Ali Plum.